This is a quick video showing you how to use the Hexapod Behavior Generator. First, I'm going to open up MetaGME. Now I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to select the Hexapod Behavior Paradigm. Then I will create a new project. I'm going to create a new folder for our project called user demo. Inside I will name our file user manual demo. The default folder name is called root folder and here I will change it to my behaviors. I can now right click and go to insert model and select behavior. And here I will name this my first behavior. I can also go in here and select another behavior, create another one, and create as many behaviors as I want. For now we will just focus on one behavior. Once you double click, on your behavior, you'll be able to see a set of parts that you can drag in. For this behavior, we will use two threads. One thread will keep track of time. The other will display the time. In order to create these threads and start them up, we need a thread create and a thread join. Using connect mode, we can connect thread create to both of the threads. Then to finish the threads, we can connect them to thread join. I will go back into edit mode by selecting the mouse cursor in the left toolbar. To edit a thread, I double click on the thread. Every thread needs a stop. Parameters for this need to be set. The default value for an input port is bool. We also need to set a default value of false just to make sure that the thread doesn't stop right away. This thread will have an output to communicate to the other thread. One output will be named terminate to stop the other thread. The other output will be named current time to pass the current time to the other thread. Terminate is of type bool, which is correct. Current time, however, should be a double. Here I will implement a timer. The timer can have up to three outputs. One can be named dtime, the other running time. And the last can be FAVG for average frequency. Both of these should be of type double. I will now take the current running time and pass it to the other thread using this output port. In order to stop the program, I will need a terminate condition to connect to the stop. In order to do that, I will custom define a function using the user function module. I will double click the terminate condition to include some ports. This will have an input port and an output port. The output port will be of type bool. The input will be the current time, which should be a double. Again, the output, since this will be driving the terminate, I will name it terminate. In order to prevent things from stopping right away, I will go ahead and click on that it has a default of false. When clicking on the white space here, I can now edit the equation for this user function. In this case, I want to set terminate
is equal to the input greater than 5. Therefore, when the input's greater than 5, this will be true. I can now connect the running time to the input of my custom user function. Then I can connect the terminate output to this thread output and also stop itself. To edit the other thread, I will close this thread, make sure that my edit mode is selected, and double click on the second thread. Just like the other thread, the, this thread will need an input labeled stop. This, again, it should be, it should have a default value of false. This will also have another input which displays the current time. Again, because it's time, this type will need to be a double. I will now implement another user function. In this case, it will print every second. Again, double click to edit. And this will only have one input, current time. This should be of type double. Clicking on the white space, I'm able to edit the equation. In this case, I will have a variable that keeps track of, of the time. Then I'll have an if statement This will print the time. I can type current time here to make sure that it matches this input. Now I just need to insert a couple things to trigger this only once every second. I don't want to flood my screen with a bunch of print statements. The sequence here should hopefully give me the, the behavior that I want. Now that I have the import, input ports defined, I can go ahead and connect the current time as an input. This thread is complete, so I will close it. Sometimes, when you edit a thread, it doesn't always show the input ports. In this case, I created a stop and an, and an input port for the time. In order to, to solve this, I just close this and I will reopen it. And there you go, now you can see the input ports. Using connect mode, I will connect the terminate condition, which you can see with TER, defined in the first thread, to the stop. This ensures that this thread will stop when this thread stops. I'll also connect the current time across to the other thread. Our behavior is now complete. I will go up here to the interpreter to generate the code. We may now look where, at where our project folder is at. In this case, the project folder was named useDemo. I misspelled user. And here it generated my behaviors, which matches our behavior folder up here. Inside, we should have two behaviors, which we can see. There's my first behavior and second behavior, which is empty. So my first behavior, after running the interpreter, created a CMakeList file that we can use to build the make files for our project, which we can then make to compile our project. There's a set of include files, and the actual source files are here, which may be viewed and modified. Let's go ahead and take a look at track time. Here we can see where our thread, our, our thread function is located. So here's a while loop, there's our stop condition, which gets set to terminate. And 
we can see our functions getting called down here. The timer gets updated, then running time gets passed as a variable titled running time, which is from the, the output port name. This then gets passed to our terminate condition, which was our user function, and this sets terminate. Down below the thread, we can see a list of all user functions, and here is terminate function with a description of the inputs and outputs where you can add your own descriptions. And here's the C code that was inputted, which was copied directly in. So it's up to the user to make sure that this is syntactically correct with C, C++.